friends, though I'm going to talk on operative treatment of spinal tuberculosis, uh, let me begin by stressing that the spinal TB is a medical disease. And everyone should read this article done 20 years back, MRC trial. It's a classic paper where they compared six months of ambulatory treatment with six months AKT, radical treatment, that is anti debridement, with six months AKT, and ambulatory treatment with nine months AKT in patients without paraplegia. And they concluded that, you know, patients who are aged less than 15 years and who had an initial angle of kyphosis more than 30 degrees did not do well. Others did well. Anterior spinal fusion did not improve the results compared to the non-operative treatment. So remember that spinal TB is a medical disease. Just to give you an example, this is a case which I did a biopsy. It was confirmed as spinal TB, responding to rifampicin and the standard drugs. We started him on AKT, but after two months, the patient was very anxious, like most of our patients. He got an MRI done himself, took other opinions. He was advised surgery. He came to me, we reassured him, and after another two months, this is what the picture looked like. So again, stressing the fact that early MRI can give you a false impression that the patient is not responding, and you may tend to operate. So again, I want to stress the fact that spine TB is a medical disease, and a surgeon should not look on for any operative indication. What is the role of a surgeon? The basic role is to first suspect diagnosis of tuberculosis of spine, by clinical parameters, radiological parameters, and hematological parameters. So you do a ESR, CRP, MRI, see the patient clinically. Second, you confirm the diagnosis by doing a biopsy, which we already heard about. And then, as Samir said, you commence on non-operative treatment for all patients. Go into the physician mode. Okay, don't think as a surgeon. Don't look for indications. Your indications about surgery are really limited in spinal TB. So what are those indications? The first indication is non-responder. Serial worsening in clinical, radiological, and hematological parameters in spite of adequate AKT. So patient should be compliant. Patient should take at least three or four months of AKT. And the AKT should be prescribed as per body weight. Okay, just not the standard AKT4 which we write. There should be significant progressive neurological deficit on AKT would be a second indication. Predicted worsening of kyphosis or instability which Gautam talked about and late onset paraplegia. We are having music as well. So these are the four indications for doing surgery. So basically spinal TB is a medical disease and these are the only times when you should touch the patient with a knife. So music if you decide to go ahead with surgery, the principles of surgery are essentially first is debridement. Am I going to move it? Okay. So essentially debridement, debulk the disease tissue. This is not cancer. You don't need to remove every cell. You just debulk the disease tissue, excise the sequestrate granulation abscesses. Then if there is a neurological deficit, you need to decompress the cord circumferentially. So usually you'll get a membrane around the cord. You excise that membrane. That is very important. Then you stabilize the spine adequately. So if you're going like from behind, two levels above, two levels below, you reconstruct both the columns of the spine. You correct the deformity, correct the kyphosis, and the basic aim is fusion. So bone grafting in healthy recipient bed. And how do you achieve this aim? So what approach do you take? The classical approach was described by Hodson's talk in this classical article 20, 60 years back. And this was popularized in India by Dr. Baudekar. I think he probably started before Hodson's talk. So in this approach, is done in lateral approach, you do a thoracotomy, reflect the lung, go on to the diseased area, aspirate the abscess, send it for culture, histopathology, debride the tissue, and stabilize it. So this is a classical case, how you would do anterior debridement and stabilization. Implant is safe in tuberculosis. It has been proved. Biometrically, it is a strong and high fusion rates by anterior approach. But then why did anterior surgery fall out of favor? because of the morbidity and the complications, chest complications, ICU stay, post-operative pain, vascular complication, and at junctional level, it is difficult to access. So then the pendulum has swung from anterior to extended posterior. So in posterior surgery, basically you can decompress circumferentially very well. You can excise the ribs, facets, go laterally, and address the anterior column from behind. 
So if you're using pedicular screws, you go at least two levels above and below. If you're using a hard shield rectangle, you go three levels above and below. And what is important is that you see that the anterior column is also reconstructed, either by compressing the or shortening the spine and getting bone-to-bone -bone contact. Or you can take a T incision, go laterally, go from lateral side to the anterior aspect, and use a cage or a bone graft. So both columns need to be reconstructed by posterior surgery. There are complications and risks which one should be aware about. This is a case which presented to us, was operated outside, inadequate stabilization, screws were put into the diseased vertebra, and it failed. So this surgery should not be taken lightly. So we revise this by extending the fixation and also address the anterior column, also use the sublaminar wires along the rod, along with the rod. So in a sense, the decision making depends on your biomechanics and the biology. You need to study both. So this is a classical article which is published by Dr. Bhojraj. If there is no deformity for an anterior disease, the recommendation is to go anterior, debride and put a bone graft. If there is kyphosis, then you do anterior and posterior. So he has used a heart shield rectangle with a bone graft. If the patient is not fit for surgery, then just do a transpedicular decompression with posterior heart shield fixation. And for posterior element tuberculosis, you just do a posterior element excision. I would say in current era, there is a modification. Anterior surgery has limited role. Basically, you do posterior pedicular screws, two levels above and below, shorten and reconstruct the anterior column. If the defect is significant, you can do an extended posterior approach, go on the lateral side and excise the ribs, facet, and you can fill the defect with a mesh cage or just a bone graft. In lumbar spine, you can't sacrifice the nerve roots, so you can take a separate incision, go retroperitoneal, and reconstruct the anterior column. So take-home message is mainstay of treatment of spinal TB is medical. Indications for surgery are limited, neurodeficit and non-responders. Aim of surgery is debridement, decompression, stabilization, and fusion. Most common approach is posterior. Stabilization two levels above and below. Also achieve anterior column stability. Anterior approach today has limited indications, probably cervical spine, lumbar spine, and pediatric age group. Thank you.